I just quickly recall bilinear transformation is a transformation from complex numbers to complex numbers. Here I call variable as z is x plus iy, and here I call it v plus i. And any transformation which looks like az plus b divided by cz plus b, where ad minus bc is not equal to zero, this is called a binary transformation. Uh, this you are seeing that uh, this is analytic and uh, not uh, dash is w dash is not its derivative is not zero at a given point. Then then uh, uh, this binary transformation is indeed conformal, which means angles and their sense of the angle are present. Angle are present. Uh, we have seen several examples like rotation, multiplication, uh, rotation is basically multiplication by i. We have seen magnification, translation, and inverse. And we also saw how to figure out what are the fixed points of this uh, bilinear transformation. This can put z equal to wz. So we saw the expression z equal to az plus b divided by cz plus b. The product of z. Find the solutions of this. Those two points are the linear points for this linear transformation. They are the two points which do not move. Also, we have seen uh, the following. Yesterday, we saw this that the linear transformation seems to be determined by these four num complex numbers A, B, C, D. So, if I specify four points, definitely the linear transformation is fixed. It is determined. Binary transformation is determined by four points, but actually you don't need four because you can divide by one of these numbers, whichever is non zero, and actually three are sufficient. We saw this, and the formula for that is was the following. If I have um, a bucket of water, you want the binary transformation taking Z1 to W1, that means W of Z1 equals W1. W of Z2 equal to W2 and W of Z3 equal to W3, then the binary transformation is given by the following formula W minus W1 into uh, W2 minus W3 divided by uh, W. W minus W3 into W2 minus W1. This is equal to Z minus Z1 into Z2 minus Z3 divided by Z minus Z2 into Z2 minus. This is the formula we saw yesterday. We saw it on your screen also, you should be able to see this. So, let me quickly go to that. All this we have seen. This is the formula. I hope I can correctly. W minus W1 into W2 minus W3 divided by W minus W3. W2 minus W1 is equal to this. We saw make W as the subject of formula. That means we substitute. I know Z1, W1, Z2, W2, Z3, W3. Substitute all of them. You get a uh, expression for W in terms of Z, which means we are evaluating A, B, C. Otherwise, of course, you can directly substitute values of Z1 and W1 in this and explicitly solve for A, B, C. That is also possible, but I find this is easier and simpler. But it's both are same anyway. So let us uh, solve one more problem in this. I want to check what is the bilinear transformation which takes say one two minus one. So that means z one equal to so let me that not like this. One goes to minus one. I goes to i and uh, let's. Uh, Check and minus one goes to one. I want these three to happen. 
1 should go to minus 1, i should remain wherever it is, minus 1 must go to 1. That means z1 is 1, w1 is minus 1, z2 is i, w3 is i, w2 is i, z3 is minus 1, w3 is 1. Substitute these there and let's see what. Before we see, let us, before we write down the formula, let us try to see what does this do? What is this binary term? 1 goes to minus 1. So this will come here. I goes to I. That means it doesn't move. Minus 1 goes to 1. So it looks like this sort of reflection in y axis. Right? 1 goes to minus 1. At the same time, minus 1 goes to 1. And I remains wherever it is. So let us see. This is our guess. Let us see if we get that. So z1 is 1, z2 is i, z3 is minus 1. w1 is minus 1, w2 is i, w3 is 1. So we will substitute all these things in this given formula. So w, w1 is minus 1. So w1 plus 1 into w2 minus w3. That is i minus 1. Divided by W minus W3. So that is W minus 1 into W2 minus W1. That is I plus 1. This is equal to Z minus Z1 is 1. Z2 minus Z3. I minus 1 divided by Z minus Z3. That is Z plus 1 into Z2 minus Z1. So I Z2 minus Z1, I minus 1. Z2 minus Z2, that is I minus minus 1, I plus 1. Z2 minus Z2, I minus minus 1, I plus 1. And then uh, Z2 minus Z1, which will be I minus 1. So here you see, uh, I have to simplify this. Simplify is an easy, it's not difficult. Uh, I can see that if I cross multiply, I get i plus 1 whole square and i minus 1 whole square. Uh, so let us do that. No problem. W1 into z plus 1 into i minus 1 whole square equal to w minus 1 z uh, minus 1, that's right. Yeah, z minus 1 into i plus 1 whole square. i minus 1 whole square. Minus 2 i. i plus 1 the whole square is plus 2 i. So they get cancelled and I get a negative sign. So that negative sign uh, can be written down. So, so let, let's write this. Let's write this. W plus 1 into z plus 1 into 2 i minus 2 i equal to w minus 1 z minus 1 2 i. So I get a negative 1 here. 2i2i will get cancelled minus wz minus w minus z minus 1. That's what we get in the side. This side, this side we get wz minus w minus z plus 1. So here all of this will get cancelled. So uh, minus w minus z will get cancelled with this and I will get with uh, this. So let us take it uh, this side uh, and then 2wz is equal to uh, minus 2 right so you know let me just check I must have made some mistake I should get w equal to minus z why am I not doing that because I am not able to make these mistakes Go to KP. I'm sorry, I'm not correcting W plus 1, W minus W1, W2 minus W3, where I minus 1, and W minus W3, that is W minus 1, and W2 minus W1, I minus 1. I have written down, let me check that. So I get W minus 1 into I should get W. Simplify this, you will get W equal to minus Z. Uh, please, 
Problem, I'll keep that, otherwise, I'll write some problem here. Yeah, so one goes to so let us check this. I want to check my linear transformation, which takes one to zero, i to one, and minus one to infinity. So, this is where infinity has come. One goes to zero, i goes to one, and minus one goes to infinity. Find my linear transformation. Such that this happens. This means z1 equal to 1, z2 equal to i, z3 equal to minus 1, w1 is 0, w2 is 1, w3 is 0. This means, as I pointed out yesterday, in the formula, 
W is W1, W2 minus W3 divided by W3 minus W2, uh, sorry, W minus W2. W minus W3 into W2 minus W1 is equal to Z minus Z1, Z2 minus Z3 divided by Z minus Z2 into Z2 minus Z3. In this formula, I want to use these values. W3 infinity means these two will become 1. So, right hand side is W minus W1 divided by 1 minus Z. What happens to W3? I told you. You divide this both by W3, you become W3. 2 by W3 minus 1. This is W by W3 minus 1. But 1 by W3 is 0. So, this is 0, this is 0. Here I get minus 1, minus 1. So, uh, so I will write this on the left hand side. On the right hand side, z minus 1 into z2 minus z3. So, this is i plus 1 divided by z minus z3. So, that is z minus uh, z3 is minus 1. So, this is plus 1 into z2 minus z1. So, i plus uh, z2 minus z1. I minus so this W1 I to substitute. W1 is Z. W minus W1. Uh, and W2 minus W1. So this is nothing but W is equal to Z minus 1. Uh, this is by multiplying divide say by I minus 1. Or I plus 1. That is better. So if I multiply and divide by I plus 1, this will be I plus 1 whole square divided by Z plus 1 into i square minus one. i square minus 1 means minus 1 minus 1 minus 2. I get minus 2 from here and I get 2i from here. Right? Z minus 1 from here I get 2i. i plus 1 also is here. This is the problem. This is z plus 1 into minus 2. And this is nothing but 2 to get cancelled. I get a minus term here. So I write minus z i minus i divided by z plus. So <coughs> take minus anywhere it doesn't matter. So you want to take minus two minus i times z plus i divided by z plus. So a equal to minus i, b equal to i, c equal to one, d equal to one. I must not be zero. So, Make sure of that. So, this is a binary transformation. It carries out these uh, transformations, these uh, changes. So, let's just check that. If you put z equal to 1 in this, what happens? If you put z equal to 1 in this, 0. W1 is 0. If you put z equal to i, if you put z equal to i, I get i minus i square plus i. And denominator minus i square plus i is nothing but. Uh, if you put z2 equal to i and then minus i square plus i, minus i square means plus 1, i plus 1, and denominator also i plus 1, so they get cancelled and w2 is 1. That's also fine. Z3 is minus 1, you substitute minus 1 here, uh, and then it uh, doesn't matter what the denominator is, denominator is 0, so that w3 is the So this what we have all is correct. This is just to check that what we have all is correct. Using this formula, we have done this. I want to show one more example, final example, where I hope I have done something like that, where one of the z dies is infinite. Yeah, here is an example. I will uh, erase this and uh, substitute here. I want z1 equal to infinity, so that means this is what I want. Find a binary transformation such that infinity goes to minus 1, i goes to minus i, and 0 goes to 1. So that means z1 is infinity, z2 is i, and z3 is 0. And w1 is minus 1, w2 is minus i, and w3 is 1. So you will substitute it here. But what we need to know is that z1 is infinity. So, I will make these two terms as 1 by dividing by z1. 
spent quite a lot of time on uh, figuring out how bilinear transformations uh, can be found out given three points. So I think uh, there are several more problems which are coming up on your PPT. You can see them and uh, that is sufficient for this part. The next important property of bilinear transformation is the following. We need this formula. There is a property in geometry uh, about what there is a definition that is, if you give me four points in a uh, plane, I can talk of what is known as cross ratio of the four points. It is an important uh, invariant under many transformations. In fact, uh, we are going to just tell that cross ratios of two po four points is going to remain the same. Under bilinear transformation, that is the main reason. I will explain all the details. Say, if I have four points, so let me call it dead one, dead two, dead three, dead four. These are the four points in context space. So that means I have one, dead one, dead two, dead three, dead four. I'm there, I don't know. Dead one, dead two, dead three, dead Then, what one does is, one tries to find this, this number, the following number. Is called cross ratio of these four points. Cross ratio of z1, z2, z3, z4 is nothing but uh, z1 minus z2 into 
By a cross ratio of four points under a bilinear transformation is preserved. Let me see if I have an example. No, I, I, I don't think I have written an example because and I told it's a straightforward. Uh, you check, let us check here. Yeah. We have this bilinear transformation. For example, uh, try to recall what happened here. I have these three points. I erase this. I use one of the examples which are already. This is the view. I will show you this. This is what I have. This. And explain. This is one thing. You see, uh, last time. We found that I want a bilinear transformation which takes Z1 to this, this to this, this to this. That means 1 should go to minus 1, I should go to I, minus 1 should go to 1. Now, uh, in this, I don't want to do so let us take an easy problem. So, this, uh, for example, uh, minus I, where does minus I go under this? Minus I goes under this, this is given by my, minus 1 by Z. So minus i means uh, w four is equal to minus one by minus i. So between one by i, which is multiplied divided by i, uh, I get i square. Sorry, i by i square. That is minus, right? One by i same as minus. What minus of one? One by i is minus of one. So minus i remains at minus one. So what this one. So these are yeah, what I did is 
under this map, I found where does minus i go? Minus i goes to this w of minus i is nothing but minus i. So this is 1 by i, which is same as minus i. So multiply by i, I get i squared, i squared. Multiplying divided by i, i, I by i squared, which is minus i. So minus i goes to i. So this is not not here. What I am trying to tell you is, if they z1 equal to this, z2 equal to this, z3 equal to this, z4 equal to this, then under this bilinear transformation, z1 goes to this, z2 goes to this, z3 goes to this, and z4 goes to this. Now let us, what we want to verify is, cross ratios are preserved. So let us try to find cross ratios of these four points. So I don't need all these things. So cross ratio of z1, z2, z3, z4 is equal to, I know by definition, z1 minus z2 into z3 minus z4 divided by z4 minus z2 into z3 minus z1. This is pretty good. Cross ratio is, you know, you can easily remember 1, 2, 3, 4. Then 4, 4 is already related to 3. I know to, because of our cross ratio, I take 4 with 2 and uh, I get 3 1. I think, I hope I have it correct. Let us check this. So, Z1 minus Z2 in this case is 1 minus i and Z3 minus Z4 is minus 1 minus i divided by z4 minus z2 that is i minus uh, no, no. Minus, uh, z4 minus z2 will be minus i minus i and z3 minus z1 will be uh, minus 1 minus 1 this and similarly you write cross ratios of w1, w2, w3, w4. Right? So this, this is w1 minus w2. That is uh, minus 1 minus i, w3 minus w4. That is 1 plus i divided by, uh, what else? Uh, w4 minus w Minus i minus i and w uh, 3 minus w1 this minus i. so 1 plus 1. The claim is these two are same. You can actually go home and check or you can see it you know, directly. You can see uh, minus i minus i, i plus 1 is 1 minus here. Uh, that will come out so 1 minus i, 1 is the other one. You can see this number. If you evaluate this and this, both are equal. That is what checking cross ratios are equal, cross ratios are preserved under bilinear transformation means. Uh, I hope I make sense. You see here, these two are equal. That is easy to see. Minus, minus, plus, minus 2, and I get plus 2 there. All the terms are same. This minus will go up to this and it will come 1 plus i. You know, that is, and that's what the terms are same. So cross ratios are preserved. This happens for any z1, z2, z3, z4 and corresponding data images. So this is a standard result which says that cross ratios of uh, uh, four points are preserved under bilinear transformation. I think we have spent a lot of time on trying to understand these bilinear transformations in a very elementary way. Let us now try to understand the next part. The next part is what I want to do quickly is that under the bilinear transformation what happens to, we have been seeing only what happens to images of points. Now what I want to do is quickly what happens to say a line or a region. That is what I want to see. What that means is, for example, let us take 
easy bilinear transformation. It's, uh, this bilinear transformation, then then go into minus one by two. Let's go whatever we saw. Under this by or let me check if I have some other example. I'll use this first. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's use this. We get out of this later again. So this is W Z is equal to W Z is equal to uh, one by Z minus I. One by Z minus I. Here it is a binary transformation. A is one, B is zero, C is one, B is minus one. A D minus B C is not zero. This is a binary transformation. The question is, one wants to know what happens to the real axis. That means what is the image of real axis on Z. Try to understand the question. What we are telling is, in the linear transformation, we are trying to see what happens to a particular point. For example, if I want to know what is the image of say one, that means I want to see where does one go. One goes to one by one minus i. That's why it ends. You want to see where does i go? I will go to because z equal to i is become zero, so infinity. I goes to infinity. Where does minus i go? Like that, you can keep checking. For individual points. Now I don't want to check for individual points. I want to check for what is the image of whole of this real axis. That is what I want to know. How to do this? So let us try to observe, think, and then go ahead. I want real axis means real axis is given by y equal to zero. Remember I told z is the rotation z is equal to x plus i v, uh, i y, and the v equal to v plus i v. These are the notations. This is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. And in this W plane, this is W plane and this is Z plane. In W plane, you do the U-axis and this is Y axis or V axis. So they are the and this is the binary transformation that I'm Now I want to know the question here is I want to find the image of the real axis of the Z plane under this transformation. What is the image of real axis? Real axis is given by this, which means y is 0. So I want to find what happens if y becomes 0. So let us see how to do this. Uh, so one rewrites this. Basically, I want to understand what I, so I want to put in some more x and y and things like that. So let us, and the top y equal to 0, what is the relation between u and b is what I want to find. So let us write this one. Uh, this says, uh, you, you can rewrite this as, uh, you know, solve for what is called, right? Uh, make z the subject of formula. That means I have w equal to 1 by z minus i. You rewrite this as, you take, uh, let me see. You can do it in, you want to make z as the subject of formula, there are two ways of doing it. This z minus i equal to 1 by w is equal to 1 by w plus i, or you can just take z equal to 1. So, this is what I do, and this means x plus i y is equal to 1 by u plus i v, i v plus i, right? That is what uh, this is. That is what you have on your screen. This means now I want to put y equal to 0 and see what happens to that. So I'll try to find the relation between u and v. For that, I have to separate out real and imaginary part. I have to write this as something plus i times something, where both the somethings are real. How do I do that? You multiply and divide by u minus i v. u minus i v square plus square plus i, that i is always there. This is equal to, if I want to separate out real and imaginary part, u by u square plus u square and uh, plus i into uh, 1 minus u by u square plus u. Right? 
this is what we get. So this is x plus i minus. This what does this mean? See, these both are complex. If you fix up any z, that means if you fix up x and y, you know some u1. If I know u1 will be related to this. I have written down, I have separated out both real and imaginary part. That means x is equal to u by u squared plus u squared and y is equal to minus 1 minus v by u squared plus u. Now what I want to know is what happens when y is 0. I want to find the relation between u and u. That means when y is 0 means what happens to x axis. Uh, when it comes here what happens is what I want to know. So let us see. Uh, if we put y equal to 0. Why do I do this? Because I wanted image of I wanted image of x uh, x axis. X axis means y equal to zero. So if I put y equal to zero, I get v by v square plus v square equal to one. Correct? This is v equal to v square plus v square. This is nothing but v square plus v square equal to v. What is this curve? Can any of you tell me what this curve is? Yeah. This is to react, this is a circle, this is a quadratic in u and v. So if you go, so if you rewrite this u square plus I return down the thing, I'll copy it down, v plus half r square is equal to one by one square one by one. This is nothing but a circle whose center is 0, comma, minus half and radius half. 0, comma, minus half and radius half. So it looks like this. This is this curve. So what this, this is minus half, comma, 0 and this radius is that's it. So what this says is this line has become a circle. This real line has become a circle. Uh, in, this, in the first class, I gave you a very quick introduction to GeoGebra. In GeoGebra, you can actually see these uh, lines, the images of these lines. Um, I don't know. If I have time, I will show it to you in this class. Otherwise, right now. I have answered this question. What is the image of the real axis on z plane? The real image of the real axis is this circle. This circle is the image of y equal to 0. Of course, you can take various things. What happens with x equal to 0? That means what happens to the image of the imaginary axis? x equal to 0, this is u, u becomes 0. u becomes 0 here means this is u and v, so it will remain this. So the real uh, complex, purely complex numbers will remain purely complex numbers. But purely real numbers will not remain purely real numbers, as you can see here. For example, 1 will not go to a real number. 1 will go to 1 by 1 and 5, it will be a number. It will go somewhere. So the image of this x-axis is this circle. That's what we have seen. Try to see what happens, for example, if uh, let us check this. This is an interesting question. What happens to image of image of say y equal to 1? y equal to 1 means this line, line parallel to x-axis. What happens to that? So you put y equal to 1 in this. One one will get cancelled and you uh, be correct. Yeah. So I get v by v square plus v square equal to zero, which means v must be zero. V is zero means uh, it is this line, the u axis, v is zero. So this line will come to this line. You try seeing other numbers, for example, to what happens to the image of y equal to 2? 
you put it y equal to two here, two equal to one minus something, so it will become minus one. So you evaluate. You will see that all the circles or straight lines. So actually, one can see this in GeoGebra. I don't have time energy to prove this here. Images of lines will be lines or circles. Lines, straight lines here will get marked to straight lines or circles. Maybe if there is time, uh, I will try to show this uh, one thing. Let me check. Let me check. Let's say let us solve one more uh, problem like this. Linear transformations, that is the main thing. What it does is you take lines to lines or circles, and circles will go to line and things like that. You can see it in your video. Maybe I can show it in your video or I can explicitly show you in one of the bilinear. Let us take another simple bilinear transformation. Uh, w z is equal to say uh, <coughs> Z plus one by Z minus two. Easy. Z minus. Let us take this binary transformation. Try to see what happens to real axis. That means image of or whatever image of say y equal to zero. X axis. So this image of y equal to zero. Again, it's the same process. W is equal to u plus i u is equal to x plus i y plus 1 divided by x plus i y minus 1. Now, uh, we do the right over. This is x plus 1 into plus i y divided by x minus 1 plus i y. Right? Now, Basically, I want to separate this as real and imaginary parts, which means I have to basically get rid of this i in the denominator, which means I will have to multiply by x minus 1 minus i y into x minus 1 minus i. This is what I have. Right? If I do this, I will get in the denominator, numerator, I don't know, whatever is uh, x plus 1 plus i y x minus 1 minus i y divided by here I get x minus 1 root square minus i square so i square will be plus 1 plus i square this is what I have so we have to separate out with all this x and y uh, separate out this only complex solution how many times okay it is 1 by x minus 1 root square plus y square this you have to expand this x plus 1 into x minus so let's write down the real part and the complex part the real part will be x plus 1 into x minus 1 and uh, minus i square so plus y square plus y square plus i into uh, y into x minus 1 y into x minus 1 uh, minus what I get y into x minus 1 I get and another term is y into x plus 1 with a minus minus y into x plus 1 right which is what I get now so this is equal to 1 by x minus 1 whole square plus y square into x square minus 1 plus y square plus i times the y x y x will get cancelled and then minus y minus 1 minus 2. So that will not either be square bracket minus 2y is what this is equal to 1 by x minus 1 whole square plus y square into x square plus y square minus 1 plus, plus minus 
i times 2 1 this is what i have now so this means u is equal to the real part the real part is x square plus y square minus 1 divided by minus 1 whole square plus y square and v is equal to minus y divided by x minus 1 whole square plus y square this is what i have now here you have to see if I want to make of y equal to 0, you have to put y equal to 0 here. Put y equal to 0, you get v equal to 0, and u, what happens to u? Uh, if you put y equal to 0, you get x square minus 1 divided by x minus 1 whole square. So basically, you have to see what is the relation between u and v. That's what we did in the previous case also. You see, in this case, if you put y equal to uh, I should have written this in terms of x and y should have come here. I will it in terms. So now what this tells is, uh, it will tell you the reverse thing. I am so sorry. It will tell you the reverse thing. It will tell you what happened, what is coming to u equal to 0. Let's understand that also. It doesn't matter. That means here u equal to 0, this is, this is w there and this is x here. u equal to 0 is this line. u equal to 0 means this is what happens. u is 0 means x square plus y square minus 1 is 0. That means x square plus y square equal to 1. What does that mean? x square plus y square equal to 1 means this unit circle. So this unit circle goes to u equal to 0. 